He was the first dude walking in the air. Doc operated. And I said to myself, oh, he's not going to make it. And he goes, who? Somewhat like a girl. Oh! Oh! Ah! Julius Irving, also known as Dr. J, is one player I would love to see in today's NBA, especially since many fans never witnessed him at his peak before the Magic and Bird era. He'll be a perfect fit for the modern game. With his unique blend of athleticism, skill, and basketball IQ, Dr. J's style wouldn't just adapt, it will thrive. Today, the NBA is all about spacing, three-point shooting, and versatile wing players, and I feel like Dr. J will be even more dangerous in this era. His incredible hang time and finishing skills will make him a constant threat in transition. Plus, with today's focus on positionless basketball, his versatility will allow him to guard multiple positions while still being a dominant offensive force. Dr. J's creativity around the rim and iconic dunks will easily make him a fan favorite. With modern spacing, his ability to attack the basket through traffic will be even more effective. His mid range and post-up game will keep defenses on edge. And with today's advancements in training and sports science, he might be even more physically dominant than in his prime. So yeah, he would easily be a viral sensation if he were in today's NBA. I could not even imagine how big he would have gotten if he was in the age of social media. So here are NBA legends and players sharing stories of how skilled and dominant Dr. J was. Enjoy the video, man. Playing the brother in the NBA finals. 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 My idol. I'm playing him in the NBA Finals. That fast. And so we, so I said, man, I love you, but I got to take him got out. To, yeah. Yeah. No I choice. got to take him out. Ain't no choice. But when he came down that middle, I mean, on that right side, yeah. and cuffed that ball on Coop. Oh, Coop. Yeah. Coop made a bad business decision by jumping. Remember Coop he rocked thinking? it? <laughs> Bam! I said, oh, 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 man. And then the other one was he came down the right side. And he jumped out of bounds. And he started walking. The finger roll, yeah. In the air. <laughs> in, in the air. In the air. Fro, fro going back. Bunted against the glass is good. I said, man, this dude is too much, man. Yeah, he See, tough. he was doing that George stuff before Michael. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. people forget that. Yeah. yeah. He was the first dude walking in air. Oh, man, it was so much fun playing against Doc. First guy I said when he started saying, put somebody on the poster, right. put Bill Walton on the poster, Michael Cooper on the poster. But when you start to just break down Dr. J's game defensively, offensively, he did so much more than just dunk the basketball. Um, and, you know, having that opportunity to play with him, you know, as a rookie, right. gave me the confidence um, that I needed to excel in my own career. You know, me and Doc, you know, we used to practice, and then after practice, Doc used to come get me and say, hey, we're going one-on-one. -on -one. So me and Doc, oh, most wow. practices, me and Doc play one-on-one -on -one after practice. And so what, what would happen? Doc operated. You know, everybody talk about Dr. J. Obviously, I knew what he could do because I played against him in practice. And, and uh, you know, I, I wasn't starting, so, you know, we played against the starting team, and so I, I saw what he was able to do. And it was, he could do everything, you know. Um, you know, he had the mid-range jumper. You know, he could get by anybody, he dunk on anybody, you know, uh, all different kind of ways. He's one of the guys that, you know, it was probably kind of scary how he dunked the ball. You know, um, you know his hands was big. He palmed the ball real easy. Um, I mean, he was special, man. Still is special to me. But Doc was the doctor. I owe a lot of my early part of my career to the doctor. Dr. J's probably in more highlights than any player in NBA history. This is a very short list. Let me say this. If they had Sports Center like they do today, Dr. J would be the top one of the top 10 players like every night. I mean, that's how, that's how iconic, I mean, he made a play every game, and obviously it was a different time, but he would be on that sports center top 10 all the time nowadays. It's 89-84, Sixers, and they get inside. You know, he brought so much creativity to the game. Here comes Julius Irving. You know what's next? Oh, what a shot by the doctor. You know, the under the hand against the Lakers where you're behind the basket. We all try to do it once he did it. What a play by Irving. I guess I would have never had those visions if, if I hadn't seen 
Dr. J in his time. I definitely remember uh, Julius Irving. I was at that, that, that stage, I guess, where I really got into basketball uh, when he was sort of in his prime. Uh, Dr. J, to me, was the NBA, and uh, I just remember him dunking on everybody. <laughs> Look out! I remember a dunk he had on Michael Cooper. Uh, I think it may have been in the playoffs where he sort of cuffed it and just sort of dunked through him, dunked through him, on him, whatever you want to call it. It's going to be stolen, I think, by the doctor. Yes, he's got it. He, here he comes. We rock the baby to sleep and slam dunk. Dr. J was a beautiful basketball player to watch. And no crazy style. Fly through the air. He dominated games when he wanted to. Dominate. And he just said, okay, that's it. My show tonight, I'm going to affect the whole game. He just dominated. And dominated with grace and style. Oh, man. Hmm. Julius Irving with an incredible shot. Even looking back at it now, and I'm in the NBA, and I'm playing, and I appreciate even more the stuff that he's done. He played above the rim. He played around the rim, underneath. You know, he did a lot of different things, and uh, you have to give the credit to that. I never forget, you know, all of us and the kids, we standing around the, around the court on the baseline, and he's got us clapping. And, you know, he starts from the other end of the court, and he just takes off running, but he's not bouncing the ball. He's just running with it. And I had never seen anybody just run with the basketball. And normally, you know, as a basketball player, you bounce it, get your rhythm, bounce, 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 jump. But he just starts running with it, and everybody's clapping. Boom, boom, boom. And all of a sudden, this dude jumped, and I said to myself, oh, he's not going to make it. And he goes, ooh. I go, he's not going to make it. And he goes, ooh. <laughs> I don't think he's going to make it. And then he, it's like he hit another gear in the air, and it's like, and he like exploded. And he got to the rim, knocked it down. The whole place, you know, went up, you know. All the kids just ran out, started hugging him because, you know, you had never seen anything like that. Here's the most interesting part that I remember about that. We were outside. That didn't happen indoor, a nice, fancy place. It was outside on the concrete, and he did that. And the doctor, magnificent as usual, got to come down. There's no way he can stay in the air that long. And he was just in the air. Julius Serving. For Jones with the ball. Finds Julius Serving. Drives to the basket. Goes up and... Oh, an unbelievable shot. Listen to the fan. Watch this fantastic move by the doctor. Julius in the air. Palming over the right hand. Picked the ball up with one hand without even touching it with the other one. And Windmill just hit ball like, like his arms stretched from over here all the way like a rubber man. The crowd went crazy. I can't believe it. Did it, but believe me, he did it. Dr. J could do things in today's game guys cannot do. Julius was like that I come from. <laughs> you know, look at what he does out on the court. My God, you know, there was nobody like him. Me and Dad Dawkins over there. Oh my! Oh, did you? he was the first guy I ever saw with air brakes. Air brakes. He was going to the basket straight. I was like, you know, somewhat like a girl. Oh! Oh! Ah! Ah! That was him. Yeah, Dr. J. You know, there were some guys in the league that when you played them the first time, it was special. And so I, I, we we don't play Philly for a while in my rookie year. And we play them there. We, we go in the locker room in Philly, in this old spectrum, and the locker room's quiet. We had a bunch of kind of fun guys that yapped a little bit. It was a whole different vibe when you played the Sixers because the year before, in 1980, the Sixers beat the Celtics in the conference finals, Eastern Conference finals, led by Dr. J. So uh, that morning at shoot around, uh, ML Carr says, okay, look, you're in the guard dock. He said, you just really got to make him go left. You know, he, you know, he said, don't, you know, don't let him go right. So the first time I get up on Dr. J, like I, I jump up on his right hand, you know, and he kind of gets the ball and he got those big hands and he kind of gives me a little jab step and then he throws it around me. 
and he, and he goes right, you know, and, and, and I'm thinking, okay, don't let him go right. You gotta make him go left. So the next time he gets the ball, he's on the wing. I am so far on his right hand. I mean, I'm like, I'm, I'm like almost out of bounds. I'm standing on his right hand so hard, trying to make him go left. Well, he goes left, but he does it with his right hand. He throws the ball out here, I'm so far, and he dunks it back this way, back over on me, and I went like, so I come over the bench, and you know, and, and, and um, you know, I, I look at him all calm, and I go like, Oh my God, he said, I said, I'm trying to make him go left. He said, well, I didn't say it was easy. The guy's one of the best players who ever played. I just told you, make him go left. I just started laughing. I thought if you made him go left, he couldn't play. And so, yeah, because I never said it'd be easy. And that was my, remember, that was my first time of guarding Dr. J and playing against him. Dr. J, Julia Serving. when you come into the league, Doc's in your locker room. Did you approach him uh, and say, hey, I'm, Charles Barkley, did he see you and say, welcome? How did that all work? I've told this story a hundred times and I never I get I must not have been listening. I never, I, I, I told the brothers. Uh, just the brothers. Ernie, the night before training camp, I was up all night. I was nervous, because it was my first training camp, obviously. But the number one thing I thought about the whole night was, how am I going to approach Dr. J? Do I call him Dr. J? Julius, Mr. Irving. I had cold sweat thinking about that. <laughs> and so I'm sitting in the locker room. Because first of all, not only that, Moses, Bobby Jones, Andrew Tony, Maurice Cheeks, like the Sixers, this was their heyday. So I was up like, God, I mean, I'm going to see all these guys I've been watching on TV. I don't know what to do. And Doc was clearly at the forefront. And I'm sitting there. And finally, I, I, I'm in the locker room, and I, I said, well, I don't know what to do. And Doc comes over and says, hey, young fella, I'm Doc. And I said, I'm Charles Barkley. Ernie, I can't explain how nervous I was. Because like I said, that's when the Sixers was in their heyday. And seeing Doc and Moses Maurice and Bobby and all those guys, but Doc was the guy. That's, that's one thing you, I always, like, you, you, we'll all have this in common. When we're growing up as little kids, there's very few players the kids say, I'm Dr. J, I'm John Havlicek, I'm Maddie Johnson, I'm Larry Bray. We all got somebody like, you know, who we are. And man, Doc was the guy for most people, especially somewhere like me, where we don't have NBA basketball in Alabama. But he made it so, <clears throat> but I, that's the only thing I was nervous about. Who would you start your franchise with? With Larry Bird, Magic, and Michael? Well, Dr. J is who you would start your league with. And he's the guy who could be an ambassador for the league, and he could be a spokesman. And his style of play was infectious. So he created all of those things that those three had. Dr. J was the first league ambassador. Bro really set him apart, especially in his ABA days, coming in, merging into the NBA. But look, I grew up a Laker fan. And in 83, obviously, you know, when Philly played, the Lakers, how many of us here, seriously, after that move, when he went baseline and he <laughs> held it, and what, how many of us went outside and tried to do that? We didn't have the big hands, but we all tried to be like Dr. J. We all tried to sail. We all tried to jump from the free throw line. I think he originally won the first slam dunk competition. Yeah, Reggie, yeah. You, you mentioned the fro. How about the shoes? Yeah. Isn't he the first guy who had his own shoe? The doc, remember the Commerce Dr. J? I, think yeah. right, so you, you, I don't think anybody else up Chuck to that Taylor. point had their own Chuck Taylor. Right. Doc was the first brand. Yeah, I right. think when also to echo Charles, you know, because Doc lives here in Atlanta and I'm still with him, you know, being around him, I, I, you're still nervous around Doc. You know, I, I still go up to him and I say, Doc, how you doing? And he said, I'm fine, Steve. He still has that fatherly figurely over you. And, and like you said, Kenny, he's an ambassador of the league. I mean, Dr. J is something my dad talks about, my granddad talks about, I still talk about. I mean, I think he'll go one player like Michael and those players will go through generations after generations. How did he impact your development as a basketball player? Well, I, I think it was just what she said, his style. I think the individuality of him on his teams is what made him. Because you always knew Dr. J played on great teams and everything. But I knew Dr. J, who he was, whether it was with the Pisces or the fish to say Pittsburgh. <laughs> and he had the same, you know, afro on. Or it was just, you know, he was always professional, it seemed like. It seemed like, you know, it was, it was always his demeanor. But you knew that. You knew that what he had inside it, of him, you wanted it, and maybe you had a little bit of your own in there. And if you ever got the chance to play, you were going to do your dunks your way. You were going to do your things your way. I mean, no one glided or even tried to have body movements like him. And so he taught me, you know, you can be your own individual. Doc was just so smooth. You know, he was smooth above the rim. 
and below the rim. You know, he was just so cool doing it. I can remember one time at LSU, um, I missed class, and he was down there doing something for, for Converse, and Coach Brown brought him over. And when I woke up, it was a hand on my chest, and I thought it was a, a guy that if you miss class, you got to run laps. So I'm thinking, oh, man, I got to run these laps. And then when, then when I looked up, it was Doc. He was like, how come you didn't go to class, big fella? And he was just so smooth. And, you know, we became friends. And when I decided to leave early, after calling my parents, Doc was one of the first people who I called. He was just so smooth. He was just so nice. And he was very hospitable. Hairdo on that photo over there. Look, I tried a little bit of a tried to do the Dr. J roll right there. I had a little curl. ESG, the acronym. Is it fellow? Wow. I tried to have the doc there. That was the best I could do. There's Kenny and the czar. I look like Robert Reed. Robert Reed Parker Jr. Kenny, you look like that. T-Mac, when was the first time you saw Dr. Doak? Jeez, um, classic films. The one on on the Lakers when he cuffed it. I mean, that's like mm. the, the greatest of all time. You know, favorite dunk. Stolen, I think, by the doctor. Yes, he's got it. He, here he comes. Ray rocked the baby to sleep and slam dunk. Was Cooper, it? the Cooper dunk. Yes. When I, was, I grew up in New York City, and the doctor was playing with the Nets. And uh, so he, Larry Keenan, Super John Williamson, those were the guys I always watched early on and doc had the big fro and we used to always have jokes that doc could go he was able to dunk on people so much because he had the big fro and he put the ball behind his head and then he'd move his hands and then he'd pull it back out out of his head and dunk it. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just like, but his his illusion and and i think and his dunk was was great but i think the way he all of us have probably admired more the way he carried himself off the court because he had a, a demeanor it was the first time we saw what a superstar sports figure in basketball was. I think we've seen it, like, in music. We've seen it in other characters. But nobody had seen what a superstar basketball player was until we saw Dr. J. I would venture to say Doc, because every kid growing up in my era wanted to be Dr. J. He kind of set the stage for what guys do today, like myself, uh, because there's a lot of dunks that he did that players today still can't do. Some, and then the way he did it, you know, I never seen nobody go around the backboard on the other side, come back and finish <laughs> yeah, and on. dunk it in traffic. I mean, <laughs> look at the dunk against Bill Walton. You know, Bill Walton was one of the great block, shot blockers. I mean, he had no chance of blocking Doc's shot. So I, I would say he's the best of all time. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and tell me what was your favorite Dr. J story. So make sure you like, share, subscribe, and until next time.